Oh, hello. Hi, Hi. guys. Oh, my God. I am Khloe Kardashian, and I'm on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Oh, this is Kylie. You're so beautiful. No. She's literally your biggest fan. Yeah. I I'm really so am. Good to see you. Oh, yep. it's going to be Thank incredible. When the door opened, I just saw Khloe, and then I looked over and I saw Kylie standing there, and I was not expecting to see her. So good to see you. I'm going to watch. Oh awesome. I'm here for support. Perfect. All right. And I've actually met Tyler a few times. Um, I had him come out to my home to give my home an energy reading. And then I also met him again when he gave my mother a reading. He knew things about my mom that are not something that you could just Google. It were things before the internet was around. And I would, I think it's an honor to have a reading from him. Okay. Kylie's gonna sit there. Perfect. And we're awesome. gonna go over here. All right, well, I'll bye, see you. Kylie. Bye. I do think it is important to have somebody else watching an experience like this. So I'm really happy that Kylie came. What the f this is like a serious contraption. <laughs> the way that I typically work is I'll hold onto an object. Mm -hmm. um, did you bring any objects today at all? I did, oh, I have an object. Cool, great. Yeah. You can maybe yeah. hold on to it and we'll go from there. Perfect. <laughs> That's, oh my my ob that's my yes. little object. That's so sweet. I brought a stuffed animal toy monkey that was my father since he's been a child. And when Tyler was reading my mom, he kept gathering, someone has a monkey. I don't know, I keep seeing a monkey. And I was in the other room like, oh my God, I have the monkey. Like my mom didn't even remember the monkey's name. <laughs> okay, so let me just, I'll scribble. I'll just kind of communicate everything that's coming through and then we'll kind of backtrack and I'll ask you what makes sense. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Okay. There's a feeling that comes across, and it is in reference to dad's passing. Mm -hmm. There's a feeling of not having full closure of like being actually to be there in the moment of mm -hmm. passing. There's a feeling of like, I don't want you to be here mm -hmm. when I'm actually passing away. It's like, I, I, for your sake, I want you to just not have that in your memory. It's interesting. Because he passed when they weren't there, I think. Right. And there's a feeling when this comes through that he actually would have timed his passing. And the feeling is that he was holding on mm -hmm. and he was waiting. Right. And um, that would have been done with purpose and mm -hmm. with intention. Yeah. His parents didn't know he was dying. Right. Um, he just kept it a secret. So he wanted them to come and see him. Right. And then he wanted to say goodbye to them and like say goodbye to all of us. And sure. then after everyone left, he ended up right. like passing away. And that was his way of having closure. So please know that. Aww. <laughs> This was my dad's stuffed animal since he's been a baby. Right. And he always kept it in his closet and just always had it. Right. And um, when he was dying, we had a hospice at our home and he kept asking for the monkey. The monkey's name is Jocko. And it was in his bed like when he passed away. It's something I've had since he's passed away and I've kept it with me at every house that I've had or whatnot. So it's, you know, like really sentimental to me. So it's a beautiful thing to have Tyler be able to channel that for me. So we want to mention this. I'm talking about your dad. There is a funny joke, a situation where a bird slams into a window mm -hmm. and just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like a whole thing of like the bird keeps slamming into the window. What is it with windows? When I, I talk to you and your mom, windows keep coming through. I but, know, right? Um, randomly, there's a situation where a bird slams against a window and it's like a funny, like, okay, not that it's funny, but it keeps happening over and over mm -hmm. and over again. <laughs> I know exactly what that is. That's so funny. <laughs> he had an office at our old house and it was um, like covered in windows and a woodpecker would always shatter the window and it would happen like right. at least once a month. It would be constant, like my dad would get the window fixed and it would happen again, the same window pane. They wouldn't move to a different window. It was just a weird thing, but it happened time and time again. And it's interesting that that was something that he picked up on. He's putting a really strong emphasis on a symbol that I see of being equal. And there's an acknowledgement with each sibling, there's an acknowledgement of an equal amount of love. But when it comes to family and responsibility, he views a lot of the responsibility that exists as being put on you more than others. He sees himself as being very similar to you because your dad was very motivated and a hard worker no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you're very much the same way. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that other family members aren't hard workers, because clearly they are. Mm -hmm. But he's coming through and basically acknowledging that you've had to take on or compensate some responsibilities that your sisters might or should have maybe done. Mm -hmm. And you've been left with having to do them. Mm -hmm. And when he comes through, there's a feeling of complete pride because he sees himself in you and your ability to do that. Aww. 
to toggle, to navigate, to juggle all of these different things. And I just want you to know your dad sees himself in you more than anyone. Oh, thank you. Kind of in the midst of chaos, for some reason I thrive and I tend to do a lot better in my life. I don't know why I'm like that. And I guess my dad was the same way, like looking back, like in hindsight, to hear that my dad acknowledges that I take on more of a load, that means a lot to me, and how he thinks that him and I are very similar in that way. I think I'm gonna talk to you about your personal life if you're interested in that. Um, okay, let me see, we've got this, this, and this. Okay, this just came through really strongly, skin. I'm saying skin, I'm referencing to what looks like melanoma. I'm getting a reference to three separate situations that I view as being like problemed areas. Mm -hmm. You have a susceptibility on your back and there's a susceptibility on your leg and I need you to keep both in mind. This is huge. I've so. had melanoma on my back. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. But never on my leg, so where else? And then there's one in a... <laughs> God, I don't this. One in a little bit more of a private area. Okay. All right. Got it. We are good. Got All it. All right, so... <laughs> yep. So... Oh, geez. Did not think this was gonna, how I was going to start my Tuesday, but... <laughs> I am susceptible to skin cancer. I have, um, I've had it twice before, but everything's fine, and I get checked every three months. I actually, like, thrive off information so I can do something about it. Do you have any questions about your current love life situation? Uh, I don't know, not specifically. No problem. I just wanted to... Well, let's talk about it, because that came to you for a reason, so what do you want to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> I want to handle this, like, totally sensitively and, and uh, with what you're comfortable with, so... Um, when it comes to your previous situation... Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I do want to go there. Mm -hmm. And I just really want to emphasize, um, oh, um, the acknowledgement is basically a feeling of like, uh, it's just important that he doesn't isolate himself, yeah. as I think he may have a tendency to do. Yeah. And that's something that, um, you know, it, we can only control so much of. You, you, right. you can't control someone else's actions. Right. It is not your responsibility. Right. So I just hope he stays in the state. Okay. He would need to stay in California. Okay. <laughs> I try to keep him at a distance. Sure. Yeah, for, it's just a toxic relationship sure. for me, sure. just even being friends. Sure. But I want to make sure he's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Never hurts to have support. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. Whoa, okay, this is interesting. Uh, there's a man with an M name that is, I don't care for, and it's not like a traditional name, like Michael, like, um, this is a, there's an, going to be a man with an odd M name, so if it's like Marco or Marcos, this person's going to be romantically interested. Okay. <laughs> and let's just say no. Okay. <laughs> so if Mar sorry, Marcos, or whoever okay. you are, but whoever this is, just remember, Okay. that's a big red X. Notice <laughs> someone with an M. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna date anyone that starts the letter M. Um, he did not like that. I don't even know who the hell that would be, but um, good. So you keep saying my next boyfriend or whatever. Do you not see anything about my current boyfriend? <laughs> Let me look, because <laughs> we might be fine there. I mean, like, I think in the way this kind of comes across, um, I always tell people I'll see an area and I'll see when a part of our lives are going to kind of reach a peak. Mm -hmm. So whether we're in something currently or in two years, we're going to kind of reach this point. I generally kind of view what is a good opportunity based on what's peaking. Right. And for you, I really am feeling like love life is not the area right now that is reaching its peak. Career is really that area. So. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges that's coming through is a referral of ultimately being distanced, but in a physical sense. Mm -hmm. What comes through is literally, I'm seeing a clock mm -hmm. in the way that this pops in, and I'm seeing this, and it's symbolic for basically saying that a schedule um, or two people's schedules would not be ideal mm -hmm. <laughs> for kind of a cohesive relationship. If we have two individuals who are both very driven doing their own things, mm -hmm. the feeling is we want to ensure that we have enough time for a relationship right. to be able to have that. And right. that can be a challenge if two people are motivated and are not necessarily always together right. physically mm -hmm. with where they're going. Mm -hmm. So that can definitely be the case. I would say for the current situation, so long as we can make sure distance does not end up being an issue, mm -hmm. we're fine. Where does he live at the moment? Where? Yes. Um, in Cleveland. I see a lot of travel for this individual, like mm -hmm. to an excessive extent that I'm mm -hmm. kind of almost like, oh, I don't know if that would even be reasonable for them <laughs> to, to like do this much. So just remember that I'm saying that because there will be some opportunities. Yes, his job is to travel like every other 
few days. I'm just like going everywhere <laughs> and it's like, okay. what does he do for work? He is a basketball player. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, as long as we're good with all that travel, I'm honestly not saying anything that I'm immediately concerned about. Okay. So that looks good. Can Kylie come and maybe Absolutely. she could? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Let's I don't do know. it. Kylie, okay. do you want to come here with me? I'm coming. Awesome. I wrote down so many notes. Oh, you good. do have like seven pages awesome. of notes, so you're going to be so good. Yes, queen. Well, I didn't know you had a little skin cancer on your... Well, I don't my... know if it's my vag. I think it's I... my breast. I... <laughs> Because I've had a, I've had a biopsy on my breast right. and it was skin cancer, but not on oh, my sorry, not on my vag. Not on the not on. Well, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> Tyler's like, what? <laughs> Do you have any? What did you Questions? write down? Yeah. You came for your own reading. Yeah, That's really I'm why really you came. For you. She was like, I just wanted when to is get it in. my turn? Um, okay, let me look at that. Good to keep in mind, you are gonna deal with vertigo, like feeling dizzy. Um, yes. Do you get vertigo? Like, I'm feeling yes, like dizzy, like I feel like I can't. Time. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? What about love life? Love life? Oh, just no. really quick, I'm sorry. I think really in, in, in yeah, let me look. Okay, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> look, you said yeah. Uh, okay. There's a situation with, uh, some, someone tries to get with one sister, okay. <laughs> oh someone tries to get with one sister and then tries to get with the other. Um, what is happening? Oh my God, does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, like, Actually, kind mm -hmm. of. You do. Yeah. You do. <laughs> I kind of do. You do. What about that situation? I don't like that situation. That person, I, I'm not... We'll discuss. I think we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. As long as it makes sense to you. I'm mm -hmm. blushing, but yes, it's all the matter. <laughs> That's good. Um, also good to keep in mind. It basically, there's a situation with an individual from the past that we've been romantically involved with, and I basically see this individual kind of going in and out. And to me, that generally indicates that this person's kind of in our lives and then kind of out of our lives and then kind of in our lives and kind of out of our lives. Mm -hmm. The feeling is basically that we want to really set healthy boundaries and say, you know, nope, you can't kind of dip your toes in and leave when you want and can't really commit <laughs> yeah. the way this comes across. It's like, I still want to be part of your life, but I can't commit to the things that you really want me to do. It's like a I really, think I know who you're talking about. and it's still, and what, what's weird though is like right now it would be platonic. It's not a romantic thing yeah. right now, It, mm -hmm. but the feeling is like, it's still not a healthy reminder to have yeah. instability in that dynamic. So the feeling is like really set the terms with this individual. Yeah, them. I think that's from like my childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. You yeah. almost met the whole family. I know, basically <laughs> I have. There's just right? Kendall left is the only right. one, so. I'm very grateful for all, all the information that I got and received, so thank, thank you for that. You. For sure. Yeah. I, I mean, this is a great experience. Just the gift that he's given is like beautiful and I think it helps people move on and actually evolve and become better people from stuff like this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much, I'll see you soon. You name anything, I'm always here. Oh, Have thank a good one. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, I didn't think Chloe, that was so crazy. I had no idea that Kylie was gonna sit in on the reading. That was so intense. There were so many things that he said that there was no way that you could find on the internet. In your eyes, I, see heaven. I was 19 when my dad died and Tyler really picked up on like the accuracy of everybody's grieving process. And it feels good to hear that my dad is proud. Of course, that's like a beautiful thing to hear. I, I didn't think I need validation, but it's just so cool to know, I think, how much, how accurate Tyler is. I